name is Danielle. My name is Cassidy. We love you, Grandma! Oh, I love you too, Glamour Girls. Aren't you just the cutest thing ever? Aren't you? Aren't you just the cutest thing ever? Let me see your beautiful dress. Oh my word, that is so cute. You look so adorable in it. Wow, I just love it. How do you love it, huh? Do you love it, love it, love it a lot? It's cute. Yes, I think we better show everybody how to make it, huh? Because it's so adorable. Yeah, I think everybody's going to want one. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to make one for Paris now, okay? While I show everyone how to make one, I'm going to make Paris, your little, your big sister, a matching one, okay? Hi, everyone. Glamour here again. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday. And this is the place where everything always gets made and taught by me with love. Today, we're going to be making something that's been requested so many times by you viewers. We're going to be making a doggy dress. Yay! <laughs> I've been wanting to do it for so long, even before it was requested. But an original cute idea hadn't popped into my head yet. <laughs> and finally it has. We're going to be making this one, this beautiful little dress. Let me see if she can model it for you. Oh yeah, let's show everyone the back of your dress because it's so adorable. See? So this is what we're going to be making today, see? It's a little dress and it's got a little bow. And it's got a little drawstring under here so that it'll stay nice and snug around the chest or the waist area. So yeah, see, and it's so easy. It's all in one piece, except for the bow. And um, I've got another tutorial that's going to show you how to make the rose and how to make the leaf. So for this tutorial, you're gonna learn how to make the dress and the bow. Actually, I think I'm gonna make it separate. I think you're just gonna learn how to make the dress and then I'm going to make a separate tutorial for the bow so that it's not too long of a tutorial. But let me show you. Isn't that just adorable? Oh, she's so precious with it on. Yeah. And you see how it just goes around the neck and then there's a big opening here so that her arms can slip through and this just goes around her little chest. See? So simple. And she's so adorable. Isn't she? Oh, yeah. Say hi. Say hi everybody. Say, Welcome to Tutorial Tuesday with my mama and me. <laughs> Isn't she just adorable? And it fits her perfectly. Yay! So what I'm going to do for this tutorial is I'm going to make a matching one for her older sister Paris, my five pound Yorkie. This one is extra extra small um, because she's only three pounds so she needed a teeny teeny tiny one. <laughs> right baby? You needed a teeny teeny tiny one. Alrighty guys, so I will let you know what we'll be needing for this tutorial, okay? Um, so stand by, let's get started. Okay, so this is what you'll be needing for this tutorial. Some yarn, a pair of scissors, a G-hook, a tapestry needle, and a stitch marker. Okay, so this was my original idea. It was going to be more like just a shirt, um, but then I kind of changed it up, and so like I always do, I'm always changing things. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with a slip knot. Okay, and you're just going to make a simple chain, and I'm going to chain 45 for my dog. Um, my five pound Yorkie, I would consider as small. My um, three pound Yorkie is extra, extra small, but I would still consider my five pound Yorkie small. So um, that's what I'm calling this size. And the way for you to know how long to make your chain um, is measure around your dog's neck. Um, you wanna be able to slip it over your dog's neck. So you might wanna measure this part um, when you make your chain to make sure it's going to go all the way around 
And so that's what I did. And so I'm going to make 45 chains. So you go ahead and make your chain as long as you need yours to be, okay? Oh, and I wanted to show you my beautiful bracelets that my glam, my oldest glamour girl made me. Um, she made me two of them um, a couple weeks ago when she was here. And I told her I would wear them for my next tutorial. So, as I promised, I am. <laughs> See, Danielle, I'm wearing your beautiful bracelets because I love them. You're very creative. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll see you when you've got your chain as long as you need yours. Okay, so now that we have our chain, let's make sure not to twist it. And we're going to slip stitch into the very first chain that we made. Okay. Chain three, because we're going to make double crochets. One, two, and three. Okay. And so I'm going to double crochet into that next stitch. Okay. And I'm going to double crochet all the way around till I get to the other end. Okay. So you go ahead and do the same thing. Cro double crochet all the way across till you get over here. And then I will meet you back here and we'll join this with a slip stitch. Okay, so I made my last double crochet there, and now I'm going to slip stitch on the third chain up. One, two, three. Okay. Now we're going to do front post, back post, and if you're not familiar with that, I'll try to I'll try to go slow so that you can um, get it. Chain up three. One, two, and three and we're going to yarn over and right here because we're going to go front post on this one this one is going to appear to be a back post so you see front post you would lift up that double crochet right there and see when you lift it up this looks like it's sitting in the back and this is in the front so we're going to lift up that double crochet yarn over pull up a loop yarn over and we're just going to do our double crochet as normal Okay, so that was front post. Now we're going to yarn over and we're going to come from behind this double crochet. See? We're going to go from behind it and push it back. See? And now we're going to do our double crochet as normal now. If I can pull out my hook. There we go. All right, so you see? It appears to be forward and this is back now and so this is going to make it a little stretchier okay so now we're going to do a front post we're going to pick up that double crochet yarn over and now we're just going to double crochet as normal okay and now the back one yarn over pick up that go through the middle here of that double crochet and this one and then push this one back and now we're just going to double crochet as normal. <laughs> okay, and now a front post. And meet me when you get close to the end, okay? Um, when you're all said and done, your very last one should be a front post. You'll want to lift that up at, for a front post, okay? So that's how we should end this. Alrighty guys, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I'm getting close to the end, and now I'm going to do a back loop. Not back loop, a back post. <laughs> and remember earlier I said that we would finish with a front post? So that's my last stitch of this row. Okay, so you see this is the look we're going for, kind of a ribbed look. So now what we're going to do is we're going to join with a slip stitch with the third chain up. One, two, three. Okay, please excuse my dog. She's a chihuahua and she tends to um, make that noise because of her trachea, <laughs> if you hear it. Okay, now we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. And we're going to do one more row of this front post, back post. Only this will be easier to determine what's coming up next a front or a back post because look whatever is forward towards the front you know that's a front post okay so let's do that oh, knocking. and then 
Now we're going to do a back post. Can you see this one appears to be in the back? So we know that that's going to be a back post. Okay. You already measured your dog and this should be going around your dog's head nice and easy. And so let's just keep doing this back post, front post till we get to the other end and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so here I am close to the end and my very last one is going to be a front post. Okay, and now we are going to slip stitch into the third chain. Okay, so one, two, and three. Let's slip stitch into there. And now we're going to chain up three. And now we are going to skip, I believe it's two stitches. So one, two, and we're going to go into the third stitch and make two double crochets. There's one, and there's two. And now we're going to chain two, and we're gonna put two double crochets right back into that same space. Okay, and now we're gonna chain three. And we're going to skip four stitches. One, two, three, four. And into the fifth stitch, we're going to single crochet. Okay, and now we're gonna chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And now we're going to count six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to single crochet into there. And now we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. And we're going to double crochet, let me see, into the fifth stitch. One, two, three, four, five. Right there. We're going to do the same cluster that we did at the beginning. We're going to put two double crochets and then chain two and then two double crochets right here. So there's our first double crochet. There's our second. And now chain two. And now two more double crochets into that same space. Okay. And now we are going to um, count three three stitches. One, two, three, and right there we are going to double crochet into that third stitch. And that ends this row, okay? So this was our foundation chain, or our foundation row of this design. Now we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. And we're going to turn our work around, and right here in that chain two space, we're going to make another cluster like this. So, yarn over. Now chain three, one, two, and three. And right here, remember we chained three and then did a single crochet, and then we did six chains. Well, right into that space where we did the six chains, we're going to make three double crochets. Okay, and now we're gonna chain three. One, two, and three. And then right here, the beginning one, where we did our first chain, we're gonna go right back into there and grab that little back loop too. And we're going to slip stitch through there making a pico. See, that's what they call a pico. And now we're going to make three double crochets. And it's kind of scooted over, so you might want to scoot these over to kind of, to kind of center it into the sixth chain space there. Okay, so there's that little cluster. And now we are going to chain three, one, two and three and we're going to start over. We're going to make that cluster over here. Okay. 
And now we are going to double crochet into the third chain up. Okay, so there's one, two, and three. We're going to double crochet into that space. Okay, and we're done with that row. So chain three. Okay, so that was row one of that design. This was the, first we did the foundation row, and now this is row one. And now we're gonna turn our work around now that we've chained three and we're gonna do row two of this design. Basically row two is going to consist of the same thing that we did for the foundation row. Okay, so let me go ahead and do this with you. Let's do, let's do two double crochets into here. Chain two and then two double crochets basically repeating that cluster that we've been doing. See the cluster that's right there? We're just repeating that right there. And now we are going to go into the very first double crochet over here. You see it kind of looks like a little crown. One, two, and three. And now we're going to single crochet. And now we're going to chain six, just like we did on the foundation row. <clears throat> and we're going to single crochet into that very last double crochet. See, we got one, two, and right there above the third one, we're going to make a single crochet. And now we're going to chain three, one, two, and three. And now we're going to make that cluster again. We're going to put two double crochets into that space. And then we're going to chain two and then two more double crochets. Okay, and now as we did in the other row, we're going to count up three chains and we're going to double crochet into the third chain to end this row. Okay, so we did our foundation row and then we did our first row of this design and this is our second row of this design. And I will meet you back here when you've got the next two rows done. Okay, so at the end, you're going to end up with this foundation row. And then you're going to end up with row one, row two, and then you're going to repeat it again. Row one, row two, and that's where I'll meet you back here. Okay, all right, have fun. Okay, so here I am close to the end. And now I'm going to double crochet into the third chain up to end this row. Okay. And so here we are, and this is what it should be looking like at this point. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to make a long chain to go around our dog's chest or tummy area. So right here, see? We've already done the neck, and now we just finished with this part, and we're about right here. And now we're gonna make a chain long enough to go around the belly or chest and around to the other side. And the other side will end about there as well. So we'll go all the way around and end over there. And so for my Princess Kylie that I showed you at the beginning of the video, she modeled the dress. She is a size extra, extra small. So I chained 54 for her right here at this point. For Paris, my five pound Yorkie, I'm going to make her a small, so I'm going to chain 70. You might want to do a medium and chain 86. And if you have a dog larger than that, then I would say like a medium large, you would probably do chain, you would probably chain 100. That's as far as I got with figuring it out because that, believe me, was hard enough. <laughs> because this pattern right here, this stitch pattern, is supposed to be worked flat like for an afghan or a sweater something flat a flat fabric so it was hard for me to figure out how to do this in the round but i wanted to figure it out because i really like this um sequence pattern you can figure it out if you want to make it for a bigger dog i guess just count how many how many stitches we've made because that's what i had to do and believe me i had to rip it out four or five times her size. I had to rip it out four or five times to get this one, four or five times to get that one, and so on. I ripped out so many <laughs> to figure out what I did. So for now, I'm going to make a small, so I'm going to chain 70. 
Okay, now that we have the number of chains that we need, I went ahead and put a stitch marker on my 70th chain just because I uh, want to keep track of where my last stitch is going to be on the chain. So now that we have our, our number of chains that we need, we're going to count up three on that very first um, chain that we made. One, two, and three. And right there at the third chain, we're going to slip stitch and join that chain with this um, area that we made. And now we're going to chain up three. One, two, and three. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put 22 double crochets on top of this um, stitch design, okay? We're, I'm going to try to spread them out as evenly as I can. And um, I'm going to show you where I put mine so that the pattern continues as we go up, as we go up the uh, little doggy dress. So the first double crochet that I'm going to put is going to be right here above that double crochet. And the next one will be above the one right next to it. And then, if you remember, we did a chain two right there. Well, I'm only going to put one double crochet there. And then I'm going to put one above that double crochet and then one above there. Okay. And now, if you recall, this was a chain three area, but I'm only going to put two double crochets there. Okay, and now this was our single crochet space, so I'm going to put one double crochet there above that single crochet. I think I am. If I can get in there. There we go. And now this was our chain six, um, so I am going to put six double crochets inside that chain six loop. And now I'm going to put another double crochet right there in that single crochet space. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and put, I believe I'm going to put two right here in that chain three space, just like we did over here. So here's one, and here's my second one. Get some more yarn, and now I'm going to do what we did with this first cluster. Put one double crochet above each of these double crochets, okay? So here's one above that one, one above this one, and then in the chain two space, um, once again, I'm only going to put one double crochet in that chain two space, and then one double crochet above this double crochet, and one above this double crochet, and there's our 22. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put a double crochet right here um, above that chain three space, and now go ahead and just put a double crochet in each of these 70 chains that we made. Okay, and then meet me back here when you've got all your double crochets throughout all your chain. Okay, so here I am at the end. I did all my double crochets, and now what we're going to do is we're going to join this chain with the um, with this area. We're going to count up three chains: one, two, and three, and we're going to slip stitch there to join it. Okay, and now we're going to chain up three, and now we're going to start on this design again for the rest of the dress. I'm going to make as many rows as it takes to get to right in front of my dog's hind legs. Okay, so now let's continue on with this pattern right here. We skip one, two, and then we go into the third space 
third stitch with a double crochet and then a second one and then we chain two and then we do two more double crochets so I'm sure you remember how to do this we're basically just doing the same thing so you see and that's why I wanted to make sure that we put 22 double crochets here because you see how this cluster is right above this these clusters I wanted it all to look uniform We're just going to repeat that all the way around so meet me back here when you're at the end okay so I'm close to the end and I thought I would finish this off with you finish this row so I just did my cluster and now I'm going to put a little crown into this chain six area one double crochet and two and three and I'm going to chain three and now I'm going to slip stitch into that first chain three space one two and three slip stitch there um, and now I'm going to chain up three and now I'm going to put two double crochets here and two, um, yeah, another, the second one here chain two, two more double crochets and now I'm on to my other row okay, I'll see you whenever you've got yours as long as you need it and then I will um, tell you what to do next alright guys, have fun well, I just can't seem to leave you guys alone, can I? <laughs> okay, so I left you off here saying to go ahead and do as many rows as you want, but I just got to the end of this last row where I left you, and I noticed, I'm like, ooh, what do I do now? Um, ooh, what if they get confused too? You do, you do something different here, because here we just chained six, and I'm thinking, ooh, where am I going to... Um, do my single crochet so I am going to put it right here just in case you get to this spot and you're confused too I'm just going to do that there's my single crochet and now I'm going to chain three and now I'm going to start my clusters okay so I keep coming back to show y'all because I care and I don't want y'all to get all frustrated and think like oh what am I going to do on that spot grandma didn't tell us what to do there okay so here I am at the end I think this is long enough for my dog I measured it up or held it up against her and I've got including that foundation row I ended up doing 14 rows and so here I am at the end where I started and here I did one two and I'm using this as my third double crochet so one two three now I'm going to slip stitch there and now what we are going to do or at least what I am going to do you can leave it like this if you're happy with it and if you're tired of crocheting <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain up three and I'm going to do um, a row of double crochets all the way around and then I'm going to do um, this little rounded edging to cover my doggy's little booty <laughs> alright so right here let me see I am actually going to do as many double crochets as stitches that I have
Okay, so let's put one double crochet above each of these three double crochets. And then right here is where we're going to chain two so that it gives it like a little peekaboo area for that little pico to show. And then we're going to double crochet right there next to where that pico is on top of that double crochet. Yay. All right, guys, go ahead and just keep doing that all the way around. However many stitches there are, that's how many double crochets you're going to put above there. Until you get to the little pico area, you're going to chain two. You could even chain three if you wanted, if you think it'll look even cuter that way. It's up to you. Let me show you what it would look like. Since now that I said it, let's try a third chain. There's a chain three. And now a double. And now another double. And now another double. And let's see what that looks like. I think I do like the chain three. Alrighty guys, go ahead and finish and I will meet you back here when you are at the end of the row with your double crochets. And then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so here I am nearing the end of the row with my double crochets. I'm gonna chain three. One, two, and three and then come over here onto the other side of the pico and put my double crochets one and two i'm going to close this off with a slip stitch one two three Alrighty, and so now let me see so now what we want to do, I think I'm going to shut the camera off for a second so that I can get a wider angle view of this so I can show you what we're going to do next. So this is the one I did. See how there's a little, I, here's the neck area. Oh, this one's so teeny tiny, it's so adorable. So here's the center right here. See where this pico is? I'm going to use that as my center all the way down. So here's my center. And go ahead and mark that right there. Right here is where we just joined. Um, so yeah, that looks like a good place to start doing our little curvature thingy. So yeah, let's see what that's going to look like. Let's do right here where we joined. Let's do a slip stitch right back into there one slip stitch and now we're going to let's do mm, let me see maybe two or three whoops I just did a double crochet two or three single crochets mm, I think I want more of an angle than that so let's do one more single okay see how it's starting to See how it's starting to um, kind of go up at an angle? Now, let's graduate up to a half double crochet. Yarn over, put your hook in. You've got three loops, yarn over, and go through all three. So there's a slip, and then three singles, and now that's two half doubles. Let's make another half double. Okay, now let's do, let's try three double crochets, graduate up to a double. Here's my second one, and here's my third one. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's a nice little incline that we've got going there. And now, one, two, three, let's make four triple crochets, okay? <laughs> So you wrap your yarn around twice for a triple crochet. Let's put it into the next stitch. Go through two, go through two, and go through two. And let's do that three more times. So how many do we have? have one, two, three. Let's put another one right here in the center. 
where our stitch marker is. Ay, 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 I didn't yarn over twice. Okay, so there's three on this side and then the center one and now we're going to put three on this side, three triples on this side because now we're going to start um, making a decline, a gradual decline. Okay, so we've got three on this side and then the center one and then three on this side and so then we did double crochets. So let's do three doubles. Now let's do three half doubles. Now let's do three single crochets. And now let's go down to a slip stitch. Okay, and that's that. So here's our little, um, our little curve so that it kind of makes the dress into a little curve and now we're going to put the little frilly part of it see all that little frill we're gonna do that so let me show you how to do that so right here where we made the slip stitch chain up four one two three and four and I'll show you how I made that little frill or I don't know what you want to call it it's what I call it okay and so now that you chained up four go into your um, next stitch and make a slip stitch and then chain of four see and that's all I really did and then go into the next stitch make a slip stitch chain of four see and it's little by little as it gets more crowded this is going to start looking like um, kind of like a little ruffle that's the word instead of a frill. That's the word I was looking for. Slip stitch. One, two, three, and four. Next stitch, you put a slip stitch. And you can do that all the way along. And if you want a bigger type of a ruffle, you can chain five or six or however many. Um, let me see what that would look like. One. So it makes it a little bit bigger of a frill, so it's up to you. Hmm, what do you guys like? Okay, I think I heard you. You said five, didn't you? Because <laughs> I think that's what I like. So I think I'm going to undo mine and I'm going to chain up five. And then in the next stitch, we will slip stitch and then do five again. And just continue that way until you get to the end over here and then meet me back here. All right, guys. See you in a bit. Okay, so here I am. I'm at the last end of my ruffle making. Just have to do one more. One, two, three, four, and five. And then slip stitch into here. And you know what? I think I'm going to do it one more time because I don't want there to be a little gap right there where we started. One, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to slip stitch into the same space where we started this ruffle. There we go. And now just chain one. And then we're done with the dress part of it. Well, actually, I'm going to put ruffle on one other area. And I'm not sure if you're going to want to, but that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail so that I can weave it in later. There we go. So, so this is what it looks like. Isn't that just adorable? Cute, cute, cute. I love that little ruffle look. Don't need this anymore. Okay, so I'm going to put the same little ruffle that I did here over here on the sides 
I haven't decided if I'm going to put it on the sides and around the belly or not. On the first one that I made right here, I didn't do that. I only did it around here and around the neck area and I opted not to do it around the belly area because I thought it started to look too too frilly, too ruffly, but I think it's because this is so short, it just the ruffles were too close to each other. But I actually think that I will do the ruffle all the way around. I think I'll start right here in the corner, put my hook in, get my yarn, and make sure you have enough of a tail so it doesn't come out. And now just chain five, one, two, three, four, and five. Alrighty guys, I'll see you when your ruffles are all done. Oh, and I wanted to let you know that as I'm making the ruffle, I'm incorporating that little tail where we started back here, the little tail. I'm incorporating that as I uh, slip stitch into the next stitch like that. Just go ahead and incorporate your little tail so that you don't have to weave that in later. Alrighty guys, see you in a bit. And then I'm going to chain one. Leave myself a little bit of a tail. And I'm done with this color. Snug that down and I'll weave that in later. So this is what we have so far. I've got the ruffle all around the belly area right here. Okay, so this is where the dog's neck and head would be. And this is where the front paws would come out at. And now what we need to do is make a drawstring for this area, okay? So I've already got one bead on my yarn and I'll show you how I did that. Here's my other bead. And they're not exactly the same kind of beads, but that's okay. They're the same color. <laughs> And so what I'm going to do with that is I like to uh, leave a bit of a tail, not that long though, and then I'm going to make a slip knot with this on this end. Okay, now I'm going to drop that tail and I'm just going to make chains now. I'm going to make as many chains as necessary to go all the way around and it's going to tie over here at the back. Okay, so I made mine. Let me see if I can measure mine so I can let you know how long I made mine. I made it about 27 inches long if you want to do the same. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this bead all the way up. Okay and then I'm just going to chain around it basically okay and then I'm going to make an extra chain and then I'm going to go over here to one of the chains I've already made and I'm going to cut this right here and I'm going to pull that through here and tighten that down and you can secure this further, like I did the first one. Um, I just basically make knots around the bead. And then you can either cut that right there or you can weave it in. Um, so that's that. And so now all you have to do is get your dress and look for the middle so here's where we did the picots here's the neck and here's where we I use this as a guide for the middle for myself and so now what I'm going to do is just hope that this bead fits I didn't realize that this bead is pretty big <laughs> I'm gonna push that through to um to there and I'm gonna leave a little bit hanging and I'm just going to weave this in and out All 
right, so just keep doing that all the way around your dress till you come around this way. Hers should end up looking like this by the time we are all said and done. Um, so like I said, this is this portion of it and I will make another tutorial for the bow and I've already got a tutorial on my channel for how to make this rose and I've got a tutorial on how to make this sleeve. So my next tutorial will be the bow and then we're completely done with the dress. You're so pretty. Do you like your dress? Okay guys, so I finished it. I ended up I ended up weaving it in and out and I tied it in a bow for now. But this is what it looks like on Paris. Paris! Come here babies, look. Pretty girl. Let's show everybody how pretty you are. Oh, aren't you adorable? Look at you, yeah. So this is what we made guys. And then later I will make this bow for her dress too. See, and so it'll end up looking like that. How adorable, right? Right Paris? Don't you just love it? Uh, yes, but I don't like sitting on this table. I scared. Okay, mommy, hurry up and say goodbye so I could get off the table. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for crocheting along with me. I had a really good time teaching you how to do this. And thank you for putting up with me because, as you know, I'm always changing the pattern as I go along. So thanks for following along with me and crocheting with me. And... Uh, don't forget to subscribe so that you can be notified when I make the bow tutorial, okay? And then after that, let me show you what's coming up. I made this for my daughter's um, Yorkie. So this is what's going to be coming up next. Little undies for the doggy. And so I'm going to make some in pink to match her little dress so she can wear them under her dress. Now how adorable is that? <laughs> it looks blue in the camera, but these are actually purple. Um, so yeah, this is what we're going to be making after the bow tutorial, little doggy undies. <laughs> All right guys, thank you so much. And uh, don't forget that this is the place where you can come and know that everything is always made and taught by me with love. I love you guys, bye. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching, watching our Glamos channel. channel.